Man, it's Amulet Titan versus Blue Moon, which is a really good matchup for Ross if he has a Blood Moon in his hand. Good analysis. You usually leave that to me. <laughs> Ross will play a Scalding Tarn. Steven started things off with a Ghost Quarter into an Amulet of Vigor, which is a very good start for him, and he can do some pretty good stuff. But we've got to remember, this deck doesn't have Summer Bloom anymore, so I'm not sure how nuts he can go. That's a Sakura Tribe Scout. Marion will sacrifice a fetch lane. I'm trying to bring the, trying to really bring the analysis now. That's good. Yeah. I'm a little surprised to see four Sakura Tribe Scouts. Part of the charm of playing decks like this to me is just blanking a lot of commonly played cards. And this thing just dies a lot. We'll find out in a moment. It's really good if it lives. Yep. That's more analysis there. Two for two. It's dead. Okay. Cool. It's worse if it dies. Right. There. Well, the, the best thing would have been for Ross to have a lightning bolt in his hand that was hard to use. <laughs> That's my point. Yeah. No, I, th I, think, I, I think I got it. Ross has a blood moon in his hand. Sweet. I don't know if he has a third land. We'll make up some of the time we lost on the technical issues. <laughs> That's a really good point. Ross drew another Blood Moon. So if I were Ross right now... Break it down for me. I would sack a fetch land, search okay. for a basic. And then I would sack the other fetch land, search for a basic. And then I would cast Blood Moon. Ross is not going to do any of those things, which I'm a little surprised about. I am. He must have a different plan. As Tolari West enters the battlefield tapped. Maybe he wants to protect his Blood Moon? Okay. So sack all three fetch lands. There's also not a rush to deploy it if your opponent's just on uh, two mana la uh, one mana lands. And uh, without any sort of cheat, even if Hanley had one of the crews, that gets him to five, so he's not threatening Primeval Titan. It's all true. All right, here's Blood Moon now. No more messing around by Miriam. The fun police is here. Hooray. <laughs> uh, another reason for Ross wanting to wait is he may want to crack the third fetch land to get the third island, so now his cryptics are good. Sure, sure. Good he's point. not in a rush. He doesn't need to do it. Stephen Hanley is going to ghost quarter himself in response to get another forest. This will allow him to actually be able to hard cast Primeval Titan and pay for Summoner's Pact. Yeah, in the fantasy land scenario where <laughs> the... Yeah, I mean, might as well do it. I'm not saying this is raw, just... That's ambitious, optimistic. Ross could have all lands. Yep. And could draw all lands for the rest of the game. So there's that. Over to Hanley. Ancient Stirrings. Take a look at the top five cards. Take a colorless one along. It'll be a Simic Growth Chamber Mountain. Center Growth Chamber Mountain will enter the battlefield untapped because it is a mountain. A Relatively bit of a rules change there. Good rules change, by yeah. the way. Non-basic la non basic lands are mountains, which means non-basic lands retain roughly 72% of their characteristics. <laughs> is not a good rule set. I'm inclined to agree. Oh, boy. Who? Oh. Karanos, huh? Let's take a look at this thing. It's been a minute since I've seen that. I used to find that with Birthing Pod. Three blue, red, six, five, indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue and red is less than seven, Karanos is not a creature. Reveal the first card you draw on each of your turns. Whenever you reveal a land card this way, draw a card. Whenever you reveal a non-land card this way, Karanos deals three damage to target creature or player. Fun fact about this one. First preview card I ever got. Oh, look at that. Main deck Reclamation Sage. All right. We got a game. First preview card to continue. Was Karen the first one I ever got was Karanos. Oh, nice. Wow. All right. You don't see a main deck copy of Reclamation Sage all that often. Let's see if there's anything else here for Handley to do.
Bajuka Bog. Destroy your entire graveyard, untap it. Three mana. EE -E for, th wow. Yeah, now EE -E for three covers him here if Miriam has another Blood Moon. Okay. We definitely have a game now. Okay, then. Remand will be the reveal. Deal three damage to something. Though, for, for Hanley, getting uh, getting the Blood Moon off the battlefield is just step one. He's mm -hmm. still got to slog his way through the counter spells and removal and whatnot. But, as you mentioned, we do have a game. Mary, I'm trying to decide if he wants to go upstairs with this or take care of the Reclamation Sage, I think. All right, he's gonna. Looks like he's gonna kill the sage. I suppose with E on three, there's you know an argument for just going upstairs. But Hanley's 22. He'll get the permit off the battlefield. No land for us. He'll just pass the turn back. Hanley will pay for his pact. Now we'll head back over to Steven. Gemstone mine, three mine encounters. Pass turn back. Miriam is going to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn. See what Lanny wants to search up here. Maybe another basic island. Ross with seven basic islands and one mountain. And of course, lands like Sulphur Falls, Scalding Tarn, the Flooded Strand, and the like to facilitate this mana base that works underneath the Blood Moon. This will be a Vendillion click. Get a little more pressure on and see if you can bleed out this EE for something that is not a Blood Moon. Titan will go to the bottom. New card coming here for Hanley. Karanos will reveal a Steam Vents, so Ross will get to draw a card. Picked up a copy of Electrolyze. There's an attack for three. Hanley will fall down to 19. Steam Vents tapped. Mary will pass. Let's go back over to Steven now. Mary knows about Primeval Titan, doesn't know about the other two. One of them is the Simic Growth Chamber. Growth Chamber on the battlefield. It'll trigger the amulets. It'll enter untapped. Trigger from the bounce land. Going to float a blue off Teleri West and return Teleri West and now transmit Teleri West with a blue floating from that Teleri West plus blue green from the Simic Growth Chamber. Counter Souls will make for an uncounterable giant here. At least that's the plan. Hanley will pass. I'll say this much I don't know Stephen Hanley. He knows how his deck works. Yeah. No, this has been uh, an impressive showing so far. I don't even know if he'll win this game or this match, but he's got a uh, pretty good idea of what's going on here. Electrolyzed, perhaps, by Rarium? Yeah. He'll draw a card. Ross will reveal an island. Draw a copy of Jace the Mind Sculptor. Here we okay. go. No Teferi's here. It's going to get a little interesting for Ross because he, I believe Ross does have another copy of Blood Moon and Ham, just can't do anything with it right now. Yeah, he's got to force the issue on that engineer explosive somehow. Mm hmm. I missed a stamp. Hmm? I missed a stamp. What you miss? Player has pregame effects. Oh, yeah, Leyline. Yep. Catching up to you. Oh, I could Crypt a Command Counter Draw could happen this match. Okay, okay. Now we're working.
We're also playing the Island here revealed from Karanos. He's going to play Jace now. And he'll brainstorm. So one is an opt, two is a sulfur falls, three appears to be a snapcaster mage. How are you looking on Karanos' devotion here? <laughs> we're almost there. We're close, right? Yeah, I think we're one away. I thought it was seven. Oh, yeah, it's six. Self. Right, right, yep. yep. Sweet. Because Ross would really like to turn up the pressure here a little bit. Oh, yeah. And then by turning up the pressure, EE gets to, has to be blown up, probably. Yeah. All right, Jason's Brainstorm is done resolving. Interesting that he's keeping Vendillion Click back on defense. I guess that's to protect Jace, perhaps? Yeah, if Hanley's able to cobble together a hasted Primeval Titan, then you can block and bolt. Giant's the name there with the Cabin of Souls. Primeval Titan is conveniently a giant. There will be a trigger. You mentioned giving... The Titan Haste with Amulet on the battlefield. That's not all that hard to do. Slayer Stronghold and Boros Garrison is the one-two punch that allow for that. There is Slayer Stronghold. There is Boros Garrison. There will be a trigger there on the Garrison to return a land. Also, those two lands will trigger with the Amulet of Vigor. It looks like Bajukabog will be returned. They'll be untapped, and they will target the Primeval Titan, which is just a little bit of shortcutting. That Titan will be given haste, plus two, plus zero, oh, and vigilance. I think he pointed at Ross. Yeah, I don't think he's attacking Jace. Doesn't really care about the unsummon here. Yeah, they could just cast an uncounterable Primeval Titan again next turn. Do all this stuff with even more mana. We got Vesuva and Sunholm. So now we'll take a look at Sunholm. Oh, well, if you're getting plus two, plus zero, oh, and then double strike, this is just this is just sixteen. Ross is at fifteen. Well, is Ross just dead? Yeah, I mean, this is double strike, and then you have the plus two, plus zero oh from the Slayer Stronghold. Mm -hmm. I guess you're sixteen. That just means Ross has to have something now. Did Miriam go the wrong route? Okay. Yeah, I mean he can he can chump double chump here. Oh, Karanos is on. Uh, now, oh, now Karanos is on. Awesome. That was nice. And indestructible too. Yep. That's nice. He needed to add one more devotion. Snapcaster Mage yeah. lets him do that. It's the first time I've seen Karanos on in modern. It's pretty rare, I, even during the birthing pod days, it's pretty rare to turn it on there. You could sometimes turn it on with Splinter Twin decks, I guess. But yeah, this is a, it's few and far between. Looks like Ross maybe wants to double block here. Save a little bit of damage, as Hanley did go for the win. Well, if you if you block with something else, don't you risk the Karanos leaving combat? Like, don't you want the Karanos up in front right now? Well, so if you block with something else, first strike damage, you deal lethal to Karanos and then the creature, and the regular damage you trample over. So, like, Kar Karanos can only take a, a can only take five damage anyway, right? Like, you're not hitting it twice with first strike and regular damage. Yep. So I, I think I think this is I think even if you were to block again I think it would be fine, but yeah I mean he's gonna take uh, eight sixteen minus five so eleven should fall to four I believe. But prime yeah I just I, he's not dying and I, you know I I wouldn't want to lose devotion or lose the click to save one point of damage so got it. There's tribe scout. My question now is can Ross win this turn? Well he's got. Um, 11 and attacking on the table. He can unsummon the Sakura Tribal to clear out. If he draws, if he finds a spell with the Karados, that's 14. From there, you only need a bolt. Let's see what this is. Snapcaster Mage, that'll work. See where he wants to deal the 3 to. I mean, if you're trying to go for lethal this turn, then you're, you want to go for 3 to Hanley. 
and then uh, use the unsummon off of Jace to put it together. But I don't know if Ross has it rolled up or not. He's going to brainstorm, maybe looking for a bolt. Cryptic Command, Lightning Bolt. Right. He can Snapcaster, right. Electrolyze, and then Bolt Hanley out. Mm -hmm. Sulfur Falls. I think Miriam's found the way to victory here. Just needs to be careful about how much red mana he uses. There's Snap. Here's Electro. One and one. Puts you to 13. Lightning Bolt you after this attack. That'll take care of it. All right. Ross Miriam's going to win. What was actually a pretty close game one. That was great. All things considered. I thought it was going to be an easy win there with the Blood Moon, but Hanley with the main deck Engineer Explosives able to set it up. Looked like it might actually uh, collapse there for Miriam, but the Karanos, he was able to get the Devotion on, trade off the Primeval Titan, and kill Hanley on the way back. Great game. We're going to watch more Blue Moon versus Amulet Titan in just a moment, but first, a few messages from our sponsors. We are back. Sutter Phillips, Patrick Sullivan getting ready to watch game number two between Stephen Hanley and Ross Merriam. That's Amulet Titan versus Blue Moon. Merriam wins game one, so we'll start with Hanley and his sideboard of three spell pairs, three obstinate Bailoff, a Ghost Quarter, a Dismember, and a Braid, a Kozlex Return, a Fire Spout, an Engineered Explosives, a Reclamation Sage, a Rurik Thar, the Unbowed, and a Hornet Queen. So I like the extra Explosives and Reclamation Sage to fight over. Uh, specifically Blood Moon. The three spell pierces seem good for this matchup too, and I, I love the Rourke Thar. Rourke Thar. One of my favorites. I love that mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. uh, we take a look at Miriam. He's got three Thing in the Ice, two Engineer Explosives, two Electric Progenitus, two Rose, two Dispel, Ceremonious, a Rejection, an Anger of the Gods, and a Gate, and then a Braid. I probably want to get away from some of the, the cheap removal like Electrolyze and such. Uh, I like the copies of uh, Negate here. A braid. And that is about it. Not going to change too much, right? I don't think so. I, I think ceremonious rejection is too narrow. Explosives really isn't for this kind of matchup. This isn't a whole lot to relic. I guess thing in the ice. If he wants to, if he feels like he needs to be attacking earlier in the game, I could buy that. Not an ideal thing in the ice matchup, but Ross, you know, he doesn't have all the time in the world. Uh, Handley can break out of even Blood Moon. So he might want to be a little bit faster here. And he's got a lot of ineffective counter spells and bolts he can cut. Well, we'll prepare to watch game number two here in just a moment between Hanley and Miriam. Again, Hanley has the option. He'll likely play first, given the format. 
Or Rossberry number 10 on our SCD Tour leaderboard here in season number one. With Blue Moon, Ross has actually been pretty, pretty interesting as far as deck construction and deck selection is concerned. He's been really hopping around humans to elves to Blue Moon now. As here's, he's gone through a lot of phases with with modern decks. He played Burden for a long time. Mm -hmm. Dredge, yep, a deck that he thinks is currently unplayable, which I uh, I actually agree with. It's a worse hollow one deck. Right. Ancient Stirring is going to reveal an amulet here for Stephen Hanley. We'll go to Ross, who will just play a Steam Vents tapped. Over to Stephen Hanley, we do go. We know about the Amulet of Vigor. There's a Radiant Fountain. Trigger will gain him two life. And now explore. One less mining encounter on that Gemstone Mine. Gemstone Mine, such a great fit for this deck because you can reset it with a Bounce Land because there's a Ghost Quarter, there's an Amulet, and we head back over to Ross. An island there for Miriam. It's just going to be a slow start for the control player. At least another explorer in Stephen Hanley's hand. Now, what's got to be on Hanley's radar here is the, the threat of Blood Moon. So... If he can avoid it, he would really like to prefer not tapping the Ghost Quarter. If he's going to do it preemptively, that's a different case. Looks like he's doing it just straight away here. Uh, get himself a Forest, unlock some of the green cards in his hand, and give himself some cover from Blood Moon. Might be time to actually cast that second Explorer. There it is. Roman will say mm. not yet. Oh, man. <laughs> love to see it. You love to see Roman? Tell me more. It's just a, it's a, it's a fun and funny magic card for me to observe. Cavern of Souls will name human. Ooh. Interesting. Steam vents tapped. Pass the turn back. Engineer Explosives the draw. A Sousa lost but seeking. That's a human. A braid is going to kill the amulet in response. No land to play, unfortunately, for there for Stephen. Merriam will draw with a Blood Moon in hand. Picked up a copy of Engineer Explosives. If Miriam has brought in the explosives along with the upgrade, he's putting a, a really heavy premium on, be, on being able to blow up Amulet. It certainly feels that way. Tribe Scout 2, a lesser yep. degree there, but yep. I do agree. But it's not like he can get up to 3, so it's not for Azusa so much. Mm -hmm. There's Sulphur Falls. Well, Jason Bounce, maybe? It's not the worst line. Going to be tough to kill. He'll fate seal Oh, instead. yeah. <laughs> Never mind. You leave any spell on top. Any spell. Yeah. Looks like you're back on board with old Jace. Oh, Pact of negation. Yeah. Yeah, you can have that. Here's Explore. Draw a card. There's a bounce land. Gruel Turf right okay. on time. I think Hanley might be sandbagging land, too. Maybe. Going to bring Jace down to four. Gruel Turf is going to pick up Cavern. Here is Cavern. 
might be changing what it names this time. Is it, what, an ogre or something? Yeah, I hope he said. I, I hope he just said Rurik Thar. That's what I'm naming. Yeah, ogre. ogre. <laughs> yeah. I did not know the creature type off the yeah. top. The Unbowed might be showing up here soon. Ogre. Indeed. Jace is brainstorming. Ross is going to put two back. Then he'll play a Flooded Strand. Sacrifice Ooh. that. I think a Basic Island might be on the way. And it is. As you're fo so fond of saying, a perfect brainstorm. That's what I call it. Look at Jace the Mind Sculptor going to work. Who Do knew? Doing big things. Who knew this would be a good card? There's Blood Moon. A great card. See, now you've got the blue and you've got the moon. Right. Just how he drew it up. Forest the draw. And that pack negation is looking extra bad this game. Boy. Jace going to fall down to three. That's its starting loyalty. So it's done some nice work this game as Merriam will untap and draw with a Blood Moon on the battlefield. Picked up another island. Remember, he's playing seven. He will brainstorm. Two and three. Two, of course, going back here for Ross. It's a bold deck choice. This is not a deck you see a ton of. But between Ross and a Vegas player named Rob Pisano, Blue Moon might begin to get some, some, uh, some legs here. Here's Snapcaster. Might be time for an abrade. Yep, to kill that. Russell untap. Protect the Jace. He's doing a nice job of it. He'll draw. Fade seal. Fade seal him. Mm, boy, you are fully on board, aren't you? Oh, another Snapcaster with the Remand in the graveyard. Oh, my God. Russell played oh that defense past the turn. Russell's going to separate his non-basics from his basics. Remember, the non-basics are mountain right now. The islands, well, they are exactly as intended. Here is Engineer Explosives for two. I think you get to have that one. Ross may want to just cast the remand for the sake of churning through a little bit here. But this does not warrant a response. Here is Azusa. And Hanley will pass the turn back. And a braid will take care of Azusa. Marion will draw. He will brainstorm with Jace. Jace has been on the battlefield for a handful of turns right now, and that makes life very difficult for any opponent. Blood Moon cutting off a large range of what can happen here. He's got uh, various remands ready for any reclamation stage that might happen to show up. I do not know if Hanley's going to be able to get out of it this time. And there's an E for zero to blow up your EE. -E. Savvy play there from Merriam as we head back over to Stephen Hanley. The other thing you have to remember here, too, is Hanley's got a lot of bad draws in this spot. Oh, it's almost the whole deck. The, the game cannot start until Hanley finds a Reclamation Sage. Merriam is going to play Snapcaster Mage on a Braid. And now he will untap. And draw. And Jace. This is what people expected when Jace got unbanned. Oh, Karanos. <laughs> Quick little uh, devotion count here. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, plus six, seven. That that turns it on. You have found it. Mm. As I knew mm. you would. Mm. You're very much on board with this deck, aren't you? Uh, I love it. I'm a blue moon enthusiast. Oh, yeah, that's what you're known for. As far as control decks go, this is the I just want lock pieces and snapcasters. 
that part I will say is consistent. I do not want to play with Lightning Helix. Yeah. I don't want to do that sort of thing. Summoner's Pact this year. I think Miriam's going to say that's totally fine. You want a Reclamation Sage, you got it, I think. Remand. <laughs> there is. Oh. The <laughs> there Dude, is don't remand. worry. Next turn, pay for your pack. The turn after that, then you're. <laughs> then you <laughs> have to. <laughs> I hope Ross puts him out of his misery and just cryptics the forest so he can't pay. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's opting for. He already knew that card from Jace, so now he'll draw. Karen also do a little bit of revealing. Lightning Bolt might make it easy. This might just, yeah, this kills him, right? 11, 6, he needs to go, okay. Ross Miriam, not going to crypt the command, the forest, but he'll Lightning Bolt instead. He'll win this match over Stephen Hanley, two games to zero. Blue Moon going to take care of Amulet Titan. And in